This is uh, Nelly Deutsch welcoming you to the closing ceremony. I'm happy and I'm also sad. So it's with mis mixed feelings that um, I give this webinar. It's been um, a whole month, full month, from May 1st to May 31st, and today is May 31st, 2015. If you could just add in the chat box where you're from and uh, use the chat box as we go, you can copy it at the end. If you don't hear me um, and you have audio issues, feel free to refresh the page and or get a desktop if you're using a PC and or uh, simply click, poke my webcam, click on it and stop the video streaming. That should work. Uh, this is to let you know two things. First of all, the pause button is back. That's uh, great news. And the second great news is that our presenter from yesterday did not have any technical issues as someone uh, kindly added as feedback. Um, that WizIQ did not want to support her and so on. So that was very sweet. But uh, Rosemary wrote me on Facebook telling me that she had no idea that it was yesterday. She got the days mixed up, which is life. That is pure life. And she thought it was going to be today. Well, um, we will reschedule her session at some time. I suggested tomorrow, but I never got a response. So um, Rosemary is very keen on presenting. She may just do it on Moodle MOOC 7. And that's an invitation for all of you if you'd like to present and get the ball rolling and share with the community for the free learning that you receive. You're welcome to do so uh, at the next MOOC in the month of November. And more about that very soon. All right, these were our wonderful presenters, and it was really exciting to be able to learn with you and from the presenters who are all educators, uh, very passionate about sharing, learning, and advancing their professional development as they go. So, uh, if you have any questions at any time, as I said, feel free to add them to the chat box. All right, there may be some new members of Moodle MOOC 6, so you're welcome. And um, I'll be able to share the uh, PowerPoint presentation with you uh, right now. And that is right uh, here, I think. Um, nope, actually I don't have it. I have it somewhere else. Okay, so let's uh, continue with a little bit about me. Um, you can read that. I keep wondering who I am, so I am continually updating. So this is work in progress. I'm just kidding. But we do change, and that's what this is about. It's about... Uh, learning and learning is about change so um, take a look uh, this is what you see today it was taken from my google drive doc where i keep a public bio you could probably find it if you google my name uh, and that's where things uh our dynamics and change as we go. Right, I also want to uh, give a welcome and thank you to Tom Hodgers, who's been amazing in uh, facilitating, helping out, doing so much with the limited connectivity that he has uh, currently in uh, Venezuela. So uh, you're the star of the show, uh, Tom, and uh, we're all very, very grateful. So uh, an applause for Tom. Tom, just let me know how your connection is holding out. 
and uh, whether you need to poke me, just feel free to poke me and stop the uh, video streaming. If you're interested uh, in getting a bio, there's a relatively new um, LinkedIn. I think you have to belong to LinkedIn. LinkedIn um, program called Branded Me. I think it's underscore, sorry. It's Branded underscore me. Uh, and, and it's really quick, fast, and it's a good way to uh, also update your bio as you go. Oh, you have video turned off. Okay, so let me know if you can talk whenever you can, uh, Tom, so I can quickly pass on the mic to you for a few words. Um, and at any time, as I said, okay, whenever the time is right, it makes no difference where I am because I love to be interrupted, uh, just as I love interrupting others. That's a secret. All right, so closing ceremony, here we go. And we're not on the right slide. Okay, so let's get to slide number one. So this is how we started, as you recall, uh, with uh, the syllabus, okay, which is right here. And I should get the, uh, let me try to get this, uh, the tutorial for today's uh, presentation in case you needed to uh, get the, um, the links. So let me get the link for you. There we are of the closing ceremony to make life easier for you. Okay, so there you are. I've added it to the chat box. There it is. So that's the tutorial for today's session. Everything in blue is, what's the word? You can write it down in the chat box. Everything in blue is clickable. That's right, Tom. Everything in blue is clickable. That's the law. That's the law of the internet. It could be another color, by the way. It doesn't have to be blue, but don't tell anybody. It could be any color that you set it to. But uh, generally, the accepted color is blue. So if you look at slide one, you've got the syllabus, the webinars, list of webinars. And this is important if you want to get your certificate. Uh, and for future reference, you've got uh, the Moodle MOOC course, Moodle area for the Moodle training and with a certificate um, submission, and uh, the course area for the webinars on WizIQ, the YouTube playlist, and how to get your certificate. So uh, let's move along here. We had uh, three facilitators. Um, only two managed to uh, stay afloat, um, and that's uh, Tom and I. I'm hoping that anyone who wants to help next time in Moodle MOOC 7, come along, let us know, and uh, we'll find you a spot. It's a really great practice. Uh, it's a way to learn. And all you need to do is facilitate. We also had Susan Dixon for a while. But um, as we said, life is part of learning. And we don't always have time. Things happen. And we have to be aware of that. It's not technology that goes bad. It's uh, life in general. Things change. And everything is dynamic. So um, nothing is sealed okay, with the kiss of death or anything like that. So again, here are the presenters uh, from Venezuela, from Greece, United States, Guyana, Spain, Brazil, South Africa, United States, United States, Italy, Sweden, Israel, Cyprus, United States, Alaska specifically, and Israel again. So uh, it was really exciting to have so many countries. And I hope that this is what you learned. I hope that you learned that learning is about change, change in your schedule, changing from who you were 
or the information that you had, but it's more specifically the experiences that you had before the MOOC and today. And it's a work in progress. So learning as change is a theory that was developed by the transformative dimensions of adult learning. And the man behind it, I don't know if you can see that, is Jack Mesero, my hero. He died on October 18, 2014, unfortunately. But uh, his work will remain. So transforming, implementing technology, which meant that first of all, we have to unfreeze, then we can change by having the place for the change, and then freeze again so we can go through the process over and over again. It's getting ready, taking action, and holding it for a while until we start the process all over again. And that's by Kurt Lewin's model of change. And remember, change equals learning. And then there is Timothy Wilson, a well-known psychologist and professor with a new book. He's got a few books called Redirect, Changing the Stories We'll Live By. In other words, change and learning only comes about when we change our scripts and our addictive habits. And this is done through awareness, of course, which is super important, and writing to heal. But healing means that we want to be able to change. So don't take it as, as if we're all sick. It's a guided journal for becoming, recovering, from any kind of trauma or change. And trust me, you know, we can't deny it. Life is full of stress. And it is stressful. It's stressful when your internet doesn't work. It's stressful when you have to go to work and you're sick and you know you have to go to work. I mean, think about your days and how stressed we get by things that may seem like nothing by strangers. But to us, they produce stress. And these are the stories that we need to edit. So that's Timothy Wilson and his amazing book, Redirect. Exactly, Tom. Well, there were two learning environments. There was the WizIQ for the webinars and the Moodle for teachers where the training went, took place. The webinars have the recordings, so you should go there. We're on slide number eight, for those of you that are following through the slides. Tutorials, the content, and the discussions for the webinars and content, that's the WizIQ area. The Moodle for Teachers area is where you were a student initially, and then you became a teacher, and that's a transformation in itself, going from one role to another. And don't undermine yourself because these changes make a difference whether we like it or not. Becoming aware is very, very important. And then manager and of course the qualifications for a certificate. Well, what kind of technology did you use? Hello Angelos, good to see you. Well, we use blogs. Well, you should use blogs for the reflection. That was one thing. And then Evernote to retain the information. Remember, information has the capacity to change us. It's information that causes change and ultimately learning because change is learning. And then, of course, I was so pleased, as I know Tom was as well, and I'm sure you were uh, congratulating one another as you developed your screencast-o-matic video tutorials, and you were amazing. Everyone, there's one clap for all of you 
and those who are not here and are going to be watching the recording for doing an amazing amazing job it feels so good and you'll get this when you do this with your students when you get your students to teach as a way to learn the gratification that comes with watching students of all ages produce and become active learners okay that's where teachers are blessed by students we need you we need students to feel blessed that something is happening and then there I'll call it Tom has called it many things but I'm going to call it interpretive reading now what do I mean by interpretive reading because we're individuals and whatever we do is right for us if we answer a question it's the right answer no matter what other people respond no matter what the teacher wants us to say it's our response that is important and that's what we have to focus on and then compare it but it's not right or wrong every response is right so what is interpretive reading it's reading the instructions our way as we understand the instructions not as they were supposed to be I mean supposed to be according to whom okay so when it comes to learning there's no such thing as a wrong answer or a wrong approach unless we're talking about something very biological and we're not we're talking about the learning process and Moodle for goodness sakes we're not talking about medicine okay where it could be a life and death situation okay so keep that in mind so interpretive reading super important and um, if you could add Tom what did you call it Tom labeled the different things he said read 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 and read again uh, your answer is always right is what I say what else Tom I think Tom called it misinterpreted conceptions or conceptual no I think misinterpreted conception if I'm not mistaken or mistaken conceptions anyways it was brilliant a brilliant way of um, saying the same thing hello Monja from Brazil welcome and then asking it is so important to ask we want our students to be able to ask you know in the old days the Greek times and you can go back even further uh, learning took place and learning through storytelling took place around the fire or before the fire in a social gathering and people ask questions from the wise man so the art of asking is a way of learning and there's a great book if you're interested it's behind me called the art of asking Amanda Palmer has anyone heard of Amanda Palmer well if you know me you probably know who Amanda Palmer is I learned about her from my son believe it or not and I fell in love with her music so there's a little bit of a hint Amanda Palmer anyone being late is fine because that's part of learning coming to class is fine not coming to class and watching the recording is fine too there's a lot of freedom in learning and limiting the learner is not recommended so everyone's welcome whenever you get here so amandapalmer.net I wonder Miro well well that that's the one you got it that's Amanda amazing music at least my taste I like her music and what she does she doesn't have an agent she's a free agent and she twits and that's how she tells people where she is she gives performances in different cities around the world and she also gives free in other words she tweets I am at this restaurant come and join me people join her and she presents at the restaurant for free 
or outside at the park. Come join me at the park. I'm sitting here with my husband, uh, who's a playwright from the UK. In any case, an amazing philosophy on the art of asking. She had, gave a TED Talk. You'll probably find her TED Talk, amazing TED Talk, about not being afraid and vulnerable and how important it is to change. So ask questions. Next was social learning. That's how we learn. We respond to others, and that's what you did. You learned with others, and you learned online. And here is a great book that you can download for free. I bought it. It's called Teaching Crowds by Learning and Social Media by Jean Drone and Terry Anderson. And let me get the link for you in case you don't have it. The link is right here. Okay, so uh, here's the link. There you go. You can download it for free or you can pay. You see, you have a choice. And I think having a choice really is a good way to learn. Nobody wants to be forced to do anything. We want to have choice in our lives. Okay, so any questions so far? Okay, feel free to add questions or I feel like I'm talking to myself, even though I see you. I see your name, so I feel like you're in front of me. It's not the same, but it's, um, it's close. It's, hello, Angelica. It's close. All right, so give me a thumbs up just to make sure all is good if you're on a tablet or um, iPad. <clears throat> just um, say yes, no, maybe, whatever you can get in there. And if you are not, give me a thumbs down. That would also... I have a lot of noise with your voice. Uh, refresh. Okay, refresh your page. I could also lower the volume. Let me see if that helps. Okay, uh, that's always a good idea to lower the volume. Um, let's lower it and tell me if that's any better because I tend to speak loudly. Okay, tell me if that's um, any better after you refresh your page. All right. And then you were asked to explore. And by exploring, of course, you develop a constructivist philosophy of learning. And I hope that that's what you did. Next, the badges. Now, what did the badges do for you? If you could add in the chat box, some people are still waiting to get their badges because they don't realize that you need to read the book. Okay, resource. The book resource has to be read. Resource has to be read. You need to read. Now, Moodle tracks you and it knows when you're reading or not. Okay, so you need to read. <laughs> Believe me, Moodle tracks your eyes. It tracks how long you are on the site in a certain uh, task, activity, or resource. You need to read. Many of you missed that. And that might be the last criteria in order to qualify for a badge. Now, if you think there are only four badges, you're in for a surprise. Are you ready? Well, you'll have to wait a little more. You also learn to reflect because that's the idea behind learning reflecting as we go and every day and that's what this is about writing is about reflecting 
So take notes. You are encouraged to take notes with Evernote and other multimedia, like your blog. You're encouraged to keep a journal, whether online or you can actually write. Why not use a, um, a physical book or notebook? That's fine too. You can always take photos, but you don't have to. Using a pen, and believe it or not, it may be difficult because, <laughs> as my daughter says, and I agree with her, it hurts to write with a pen. It really does. You know, it hurts. We're not used to it, so you get shoulder pains maybe. But don't give up. Writing with a pen or pencil has a great deal of value. Yes, thank you, Tom. Google Doc as well. But don't forget the pen. You might think this is funny coming from Nellie, but this is research-based, not on my personal research, but there have been a lot of studies on the importance of using this tool. It's also technology, the pen. As a way to retain learning, you connected and you socially engaged. You shared your work as much as you could on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, and so on. And if you haven't, it's time you did. Right now, with this session, why don't you uh, spread the word? Plus, hopefully, you're on your way to developing an online presence. And you'll get a certificate if you do the following. So this is an example of what your certificate will look like, but it will not have my name um, is presented to. This is just a, uh, a demo. It'll have your name as it is in the course. So if you want to have a different name or you have more names, you can add if you have, you know, some people have three, four, five names. So uh, you'll be able to add your full name. Make sure it's in your profile. So take a look at your profile because that's the way it's going to look. Okay, so... Make sure that that's how you want your name, and that's what you will get. And for the finale, the final course badge will look like this. You'll get this once you, after June 8, when you get your certificate, you will also be awarded a badge. So all you need is to submit your work and get a certificate to earn the badge. Now, how do you get your certificate? Okay, I'm going to, um, what do I have two here? Yeah, I wanted to um, give you an example. I don't know if he's here today. A sample of what a reflection if you don't want too much text what it looks like um, let me just get it from here first this is what it will look like uh, here's an example of a blog post using Moodle okay from one of the uh, presenters one of the uh, participants who became a presenter that's the idea that's the teaching as a way to learn or learn by teaching. Okay, there it is. And here's another one by uh, a participant from South Africa who was blogging about Story That because she finds it amazing. And I totally agree with her. All right, so let's take a look at uh, this. I'll stop my video streaming. And uh, start the recording. Here we go. Uh, hello, this is my reflection of the webinar How to Motivate Learners in Online Learning Environment. Uh, Friday, May 22nd, the presenter uh, was Ebba Ossianelson, a Moodle MOOC 6. Um, briefly about uh, about uh, this webinar. This presentation was uh, about experience of presenter in online learning environment. 
and uh, gave to all listeners explanation about students' motivation for online learning and directions how to motivate them. Also presented on very nice base book about success indicators, importance of institutions uh, in students' motivation and different types of support distance uh, learning. Um, yes, I was connected with other attendees uh, by chat, but uh, I wasn't so active because my attention was on the presentation. Uh, in first time, I thought uh, that uh, for motivation of students are enough well-designed courses, but uh, further explanation bring up questions about capabilities of students to adopt in online learning environments and uh, our position and teachers uh, in the process of students' adoption. Mm, as teacher, I am very interested for real learning, and these days I am preparing the first online course for my students. And the motivation of students for e learning is very interesting and important for me. Um, many thoughts uh, went through my mind as a result of presentation. Uh, one was necessity of changing of changing a learning environment uh, as a result of increasing requests for mobility and freedom, as well as digital uh, native young generation. Presence of different devices and internet are pre-requests for e-learning, but both resource, resources are widely available. Uh, next uh, was opportunity of uh, e-learning to share our ideas without uh, borders and uh, uh, and uh, I think about different preferences of students about kinds of communication and how to adopt e-learning according that. Uh, I felt very nice uh, because I thought about my future mission as professor in, uh, and teacher in uh, e-learning environment. Uh, uh, but also maybe I felt discomfort uh, when I thought about huge knowledge which I must to learn. Must learn. Uh, about uh, ch about challenges, I think uh, that the biggest challenge uh, is motivation of students uh, and uh, maybe how engage them in e-learning in e learning environment. Uh, and uh, this is uh, this is the reason why I made a reflection on this subject or this uh, webinar. Mm, steps which I can to do to motivate students are well-designed courses, encouragement to the students, uh, monitoring of progress, and uh, including success indicators. According with advice in presentation, I would like to check my students' digital literacy uh, through evaluation about, about how students accept uh, the uh, e-learning the e environment and help if uh, they have a problem. Uh, the question which I would like to research in future is ready of my institution to make some efforts in the aim to motivate students for e-learning uh, e environment. Thank you for attention. Thank you. Thank you for very nice very That was a reflection. It wasn't long to the point and he answered every single question which is what you're expected to do now this is how you'll do it okay let me um, just share the uh, videos with you in case you're not getting uh, the video um, okay here it is okay that's the uh, the link and um, I think that's also the link to something or other. And let's go back to uh, the other uh, video and we'll try that. If you're having problems, I suggest you, um, I don't know, I'm having problems. <laughs> I suggest you uh, simply, why am I having problems? This is not very typical of me. Um, 
let's try the other one. I think it's this one. Uh, for some reason, it's not working. You know, sometimes when you aim too high, you can be disappointed. Okay, here we go. There it is. This is uh, Nelly Deutsch. I'm going to demonstrate how you can get your certificate of completion for a Moodle MOOC 6. And this is for both Moodle training participants and Moodle MOOC 6 participants of the webinars. There were two tracks and you could do both or one or the other. So this is how you can get your certificate. Notice certificates will be available from June 8. However, you may start by reflecting on the webinar. Yes, only one webinar. This is the reflection submission area. Let me take you there right now. You may add your submission as of May 31st, 2015 by clicking on add a submission. Let's do that now. You're prompted with an area where you can add a text, and the text will be, let's open up the uh, editor, will be of your blog post. In other words, you need to add the link to your blog and blog post. Right here, you write the name of the blog, highlight, the words go into the link submission area, click on it, add the link. I'm just going to add a link to uh, my blog. Not very active, but a blog. Okay, there it is. And then you're going to insert right here. Don't forget to insert or you won't see it. And then it's hyperlinked. Okay, the name of your blog. Mine is called Passionate About Learning, but that's okay. You just need the link to the blog post. Okay, and then you simply save the changes. Now, now, what are you going to have in your blog, blog post? Well, well you're, going you're going to have, have a video tutorial and text reflecting on 10 questions. questions. Let, me Let me get the 10 questions, questions for you right now. This, this is um, how you present. present. It's part, part of the syllabus, syllabus here. notice here. But, but it's uh, right, right here, here. get your certificate, certificate click, and you'll be able to get this. So how do you get your certificate? Participants who wish to get a certificate will need to reflect on the live presentations. In this case, it's only one, but you may reflect on more using MoveNote, PresentMe, SlideSpeech, Plotagon, or Screencast-O-Matic that you've been using in your Moodle teacher training. Please, Please note, note that you only need to share the link. And that's, and that's it. In order to, to do that, that, you need to watch the webinars. webinars. And here is the list of webinars. Just click on it. You get to the list of webinars. There were 26. And here they are. Okay, the links to the webinars will appear right here. Another place where you can get the webinars is in the Moodle for Teachers MOOC 6 area on WizIQ. But before we get there, you can also click on the area right here. You also have them on the, the syllabus. syllabus. Okay, okay so, so if you go into it, you'll be able to uh, view them by going into course schedule, schedule and you'll get a list of the webinars right here. Okay, for each week, notice the recordings will appear. They're all recordings except for the one that's going to come up today. So you go through that. In addition, you'll be able to 
go through the syllabus and you can find the syllabus in about the course as well which is right here there are different ways to get to the syllabus so uh, each one will get you there notice the syllabus is right here under course description and if you scroll down here is the uh, table of contents you'll be able to see the live online classes and the webinars okay and here they are notice you'll be able to get to them by clicking on the following okay these are the webinars and that's it looking forward to uh, watching your tutorial and reflection and getting to know your blog so that we can also share and uh, learn together Thank, Thank you so, so much, much for joining Moodle, Moodle MOOC 6 and the upcoming Moodle, Moodle MOOC 7. 7. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. Okay, I hope uh, that was helpful. Uh, are there any questions about the uh, requirements for a certificate and on how to reflect? It's a work in progress if you've never reflected before, but if you do it on a daily basis, <laughs> your life will change, definitely. All right, so feel free to um, ask questions. Um, if not, give me a thumbs down if you don't have any questions at this time. Someone asked me about uh, how long will the uh, Moodle MOOC stay open well generally we're quite flexible if there are reasons for we don't want new people to join at this time we prefer that they join the next one but if you're in the MOOC already and you haven't had time to finish and you'd like to finish everything uh, technically speaking it will be open until the next one starts which means it'll be open until the end of October but deadlines are really important I know that I need deadlines and I'm sure you do too so don't go crazy unless there's a really good reason, of course, not to go crazy ever. But um, keep me posted on how you're doing because we're not going to be in there, Tom and I. Okay, we may uh, drop by, but it's uh, it's pretty much uh, you on your own. Okay, so we'll be there uh, for the next two weeks. Um, I think that's uh, fair enough. All right, so we'd like to thank you at this time. And wish you an amazing Moodle link, happy Moodling and online teaching, and that you learn and change in the direction that is great for you, whatever it is. And don't let anybody else tell you that you're wrong about anything. Keep the faith and enjoy learning. Are there any questions at this time? And Tom, will you be able to speak? Uh, the next MOOC, you will learn about it. I haven't opened it as I usually do because I think that, uh, from my experience, opening things too soon can be problematic with technology. So um, Moodle MOOC 7 uh, will take place uh, in the month of November, from November 1st until November 30, so you lose a day. I think November only has 30 days. No, I'm wrong, it does have 31, doesn't it? 30 days have September, April, and do it in November 30, yes. 30 days, so, um, oh, I'm sorry, the neighbors. I'm glad you have, that they have grass over there in Venezuela, that, they, that there's enough water. That's wonderful, because as you know, in California, they, they, are, they can't have grass anymore. No lawns in California right now because of the uh, situation with the water shortage. So only movie stars and they're being uh, uh, attacked. Beach lawns. <laughs> they have beach lawns. Yes. So um, uh, the Moodle MOOCs. In the meantime, you may do as Miro did today. I was very happy you did that. And either join Moodle for Teachers on WizIQ. You'll get notified either on Moodle for Teachers on WizIQ or um, on WizIQ in general. So if you need the WizIQ course area, 
here it is. Stay there. Stay put. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them at any time. We will re be responding to you anytime. So feel free to use the Moodle MOOC 6 on Wiz IQ course area. That area is going to be open forever and you'll get notified about any Moodle for Teacher courses and specifically Moodle MOOC 7. In addition, there is a place called Moodle for Teachers and you're invited to join just as uh, Miro did today. By the way, how many of you have joined the uh, Moodle for Teachers? That's a place where even if uh, the Moodle MOOCs close, that will stay open. So um, we're talking about Moodle for Teachers. Anyone have the link to it? Because I seem to be in another account. Tom, do you have the link to uh, Moodle for Teachers? I don't have it right now. But um, Miro, do you have it? I will. Uh, Nevis is not here today, but um, certainly, and I'd like to invite you, those of you that are English language teachers, to our class today and webinars for in the International Association of Teaching English as a Foreign Language. Uh, we have a class today. These are bi-monthly uh, sessions every Sunday at the time of the presenter's choice. So thank you, Tom. Thank you so much for adding that. So there it is. Uh, yes, Nevis was very, very active in the social networking area, specifically Twitter and Facebook, and she was making sure that everybody knew and was updated on what's happening with the webinars and anything else. You're also invited to join the Moodle MOOC 6 Facebook group. Uh, that's pretty act. Oh, thank you, Tom. You took the words out of my mouth. That's right. Uh, I guess we think alike these days. All right, so feel free to do that as well so we can stay connected no matter what. So thank you so much, everyone. And please join us with uh, e -maze. And uh, Crystal, Dr. Crystal Brody from Kentucky, United States, an EFL teacher trainer, and someone who likes to try new technologies because she loves learning, originally from Germany. So we're going to be there in about 12 minutes. So get your coffee ready. I've got my hot lemonade. And um, thank you for all you've done and looking forward to seeing those blog posts so that I can award you or the system can award you and I will be notified of um, the certificate. So thank you everyone. This was recorded and will appear everywhere. <laughs> if you um, want, want further information you're also invited to tweet, tweet me. Okay, there it is. I put everything on Twitter, also on Facebook, but I prefer Twitter. Copy chat. Oh, Nevis, you're here. Wow, Tom, can you say a few words? We've got a second or two. Um, it would be nice. Um, but I see. I didn't notice you, Tom went. All right, so copy chat, everyone. The chat is just above. Copy it and... Oh, I'm so sorry about the thunder, even though I like thunder sometimes. It's exciting. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. All right, so see you in the next session. Uh, Nevis, you're also invited. And I was thanking you for doing an amazing job social networking for Moodle MOOC 6. Bye, everybody.